Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Hill, a fellowship trained shoulder and elbow specialist. What that means is I offer comprehensive management of all shoulder and elbow issues, ranging from arthritis to fractures to tendon The talk injuries. I'd like to give you is, um, my shoulder hurts and I can't lift it. So what do you do? I'm gonna give you my final thoughts first, is shoulder pain is extremely common, especially in any overhead athletes or workers that uh, work overhead. And most pathology can be managed without any type of surgery, with any anti-inflammatories, uh, possibly plus minus injections or physical therapy. But it, it is really important to get a timely evaluation because this may affect your outcomes. So when we're talking about the shoulder, I think it's important to understand the anatomy. And a lot of people ask, what is the rotator cuff? And the rotator cuff basically cradles the humerus. Um, it's made up of four muscles, one in the front, one on top, and then two in the back. We'll look at this to see the main job. This is a cadaveric dissection. And again, we see the one on the top, and then the two in back. And basically, what these are doing, their primary principle is to keep the humerus compressed against the glenoid. It additionally helps you raise your arm externally rotate and internally rotate. But the primary function of the rotator cuff is to keep it compressed so that shoulder doesn't fall off. One of the most important things in shoulder pain is a detailed history. You know, when did the pain start? Was there a traumatic event? If there's a traumatic event, it may be uh, more prudent to get to somebody early versus if it kind of starts on a, a gradual process, you may have more time to, to see if it gets better. Um, and then, does the patient feel like they need to go to the ER? Commonly, I, I see patients in clinic, they come in, they say, look, doc, I went to the urgent care or ER facility because my shoulder was hurting so bad. And that commonly points to a certain pathology. And then, what is the frequency of the pain? And also, patient comorbidities uh, are important in the diagnosis of shoulder pain. Next, uh, obviously, a physical exam is important. You need to be like Inspector Gadget and look at everything. So we inspect the patients, we uh, do palpation, see if there's any tenderness, we look at the range of motion, and then there's some provocative tests that you may want to do to look at certain pathologies. Shoulder pain also can come from many different parts. So when you look at this, neck pain can frequently radiate to the shoulder. You can have your chest pain radiating to the shoulder, you can have your abdomen, or even elbow pain can all radiate to the shoulder. shoulder. And so really zeroing in on the shoulder uh, takes kind of a complete process of the clinical history and physical exam. Um, certainly most people that kind of have pain in this area have some pain in the neck. A lot of times the pain may radiate past the elbow to the hand. That's a key sign. Uh, may cause weakness, decreased reflexes, and the numbness to the hand is most commonly neck pain as well. Versus the shoulder commonly doesn't go up to the neck. So if you have pain that kind of comes up here to the neck, most commonly that's starting in the neck, and not necessarily from the shoulder. Shoulder pain also doesn't frequently go past the elbow joint. And then any active range of motion when you move the shoulder, if it's shoulder pain, should hurt more. Uh, one of the things we get right away is imaging studies. These are important for a couple of reasons. When you look at this uh, AP view of a left shoulder, we can see that this space here is frequently 8 to 12 millimeters. That's where the rotator cuff sits. And so if you see a patient that doesn't quite have that space, without even getting an MRI, you know that this patient has a rotator cuff tear. Additionally, we've done some other things and measured some angles that help out with uh, whether it's rotator cuff disease or arthritis. But a lot of, lots of times you see a patient and they come in with something like this. Uh, with the arrow pointing to a calci calcium deposit in the rotator cuff. In these patients, uh, it's called calcific tendonitis, extremely, extremely painful. But lots of times it can be managed without surgery with anti-inflammatories or any corticosteroids. An MRI, a typical MRI of a shoulder, shows the soft tissue components. You can see the rotator cuff tendon as well as the ball and socket. This is what a normal rotator cuff tendon looks like versus you can see this one where it's torn. And so that's where when we're concerned about tears or soft tissue injuries, rotator uh, MRIs may be helpful. And so then 
talk about a few of the common pathologies. So subacromial bursitis or impingement, uh, patients are frequently diagnosed with this. And what's happening here is you have a bursitis above the shoulder, and lots of times this is impinging on that and causing pain. So it's mostly localized pain to the shoulder or laterally. Um, they have pain with overhead range of motion. But luckily, uh, we can do a few things. We can inject a corticosteroid to, to that spot, and if that relieves the pain, then we know what the diagnosis is. A lot of times that's curative as well. Um, other times we can just do physical therapy and avoid that. And, you know, as the last resort, sometimes you can uh, cut that spur. But uh, here is typical the uh, exercises and treatment modalities for subacromial bursitis or impingement. The injection, we're trying to hit the subacromial bursa. And so this is a patient sitting forward and we uh, stick a needle with typically like a lidocaine or a corticosteroid. Um, sometimes, as this spur is impinging on this, we do have to come in and either cut this or shave it down. But that's, that's typically, like I said, a last resort. And what about rotator cuff tear? So rotator cuff tear is where the tendon tears from the muscle. And you can see here, here is a tear. This is what it looks like when we look through the uh, arthroscope or camera that's into the joint. And rotator cuff tears are fairly common. Uh, one study, they got MRIs on 30, uh, 96 asymptomatic individuals. Again, these were people without any type of shoulder pain. And what they found is two radiologists looked at the MRIs and the prevalence of rotator cuff disease increased with age. So in patients uh, that were 19 to 39, only 4%, one patient had a partial rotator cuff tear. But this went up, 40 to 60 years, 28% of patients without any shoulder pain had a rotator cuff tear. And then over 60, it was greater than 50%. And so this is, this is why it's good not to just go straight to an MRI, because certainly these findings are going to come up. And if you're over the age of 60, you have a, basically a flip of the coin that you're going to find something on that MRI. Um, but it's, it's prudent to not always treat the images, treat the patient. And so just a, be, a brief kind of description of rotator cuff tears. They come in all sizes and flavors. And just like most other shoulder problems, most commonly we can treat them non-operatively. And so it's a combination of anti-inflammatories and Tylenol. Therapy is extremely important. Over 70% of patients can get better with therapy with single tendon rotator cuff tears. Corticosteroid injections can help, although too much corticosteroid actually damages the tendon, but it can help if you need a, a jump start or a boost uh, prior to therapy. And then the gold standard now is arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. So what we do is we take sutures and anchors, just like drywall anchors. We stitch through the tendon, and then we attach it to the bone. And nowadays, arthroscopic procedures are most commonly outpatient. We make small incisions, and the patient's able to go home on the same day. Um, the benefits of arthroscopic rotator cuff repair is with these small cameras, you, can, uh, you get to stick in the joint, and you can evaluate the whole joint and see, see the whole uh, shoulder. Um, again, it requires general anesthesia. Lots of times our anesthesia colleagues help us and they give a block to lessen the pain. And then the patient goes home uh, that same day and um, most patients tolerate this fairly well. And so that's it for uh, common shoulder problems.